but in dynamic terms, nothing should be ruled out. We will do whatever it takes to ensure that Russia cannot win this. Do more for Ukraine, weapons, ammunition and air defense. We are working on it, but it is clear, he added, there will be no ground troops from European countries or NATO. Spain, Italy, Poland and the Czech Republic have since issued similar. We need to consider new actions to support Ukraine. These must meet very specific needs. I'm thinking in particular of mine clearance, cyber and the production of weapons on Ukrainian territory. Some of these actions, and I'm answering the member's question, some of these actions could require a presence on Ukrainian territory without crossing the threshold of belligerence. Nothing can be ruled out. This was, and still is, the position of the President of the Republic. The Kiel Institute suggests that France is still a long way down, in fact, on the second page, long behind Germany and the UK in what is being supplied to Ukraine. That said, there were one or two important measure, measures that were announced, who currently serves as Senior Director of the Atlantic Council's Eurasia Centre. Good to have you with us uh, on the programme, Ambassador. We just heard, actually, from the White House that they won't be sending troops to Ukraine. There seems to be an unfortunate mismatch in communication between the two big European powers? Look, uh, I think that France is trying to uh, push the alliance, and for that matter, the EU, into taking more forward-leaning steps to ensure the defense of Ukraine and the ultimate defeat of Russia. I think that's important and positive because you have a, an axis of the timid in Berlin and in Washington, which has been keeping uh, NATO back, keeping their own countries back from providing the, the support Ukraine needs and in our national interest and the German national interest demand. Having said that, um, certainly what Macron said about troops was provocative. What he said about long-range fires was absolutely essential. Because here, again, the U.S. and Germany have been timid, not strongly defending their own interests and protecting Europe. Yeah, he accepted last night that everybody had to take their fair share of responsibility for the failures, specifically the promise that he made to supply a million shells uh, by um, the spring. We just didn't have the capacity for that in Europe. So does this new agreement to use shared EU funds to buy shells from outside the European Union go some way to solving that problem? That's a positive, but only a short-term solution. What needs to happen in the United States and in Europe, uh, governments need to ramp up their arms production industries. Uh, the Biden team had a meeting at the Pentagon in the early spring of 2022 with defense industry leaders to talk about this, which was a good step. But then, as with their weapons supply to Ukraine, they've been slow and, let's say, not far-seeing or bold in implementing an idea that makes a great deal of sense. There's no reason why we couldn't have ramped up our arms industries a great deal over the past 18 months, but we have not. Well, that was, that was precisely the point I was going to come to, because last night's summit was merely another chapter in the litany of, of slow walking problems that all the allies have, have been guilty of. I mean, incrementally, it seems that we cross our red lines every six months. So last night we, talk, we start talking about medium and long range weapons being supplied to Ukraine with all the implications therein for attacking Russian cities beyond the border. Um, I agree with you. It's certainly been true since World War II. The United States has been the principal power ensuring the security of the West. Um, it's not quite, even though we're the only ones who can do it, it's not playing that role in a bold and statesmanlike fashion over the past two years. And that is the heart of the problem. The big four congressional figures have been at the White House this afternoon. We just heard in the last hour from um, the Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer that uh, the House leader, um, who, of course, is refusing to put the Ukraine bill on the floor, wants to do it but needs to find a way. What is Mike Johnson's problem here and how quickly do you think this will get done? Uh, my bottom line assessment is it will get done. It will take at least two months and maybe longer. The point is this. Johnson will be thrown out of office because he has a very small majority in the House, and there are several very naive people in the Republican Freedom Caucus who want to kill aid to Ukraine because they don't have a clue about American interests. So he's trying to avoid that. I don't think he's going to be able to find a magic formula. Um, so either then he has to put the bill on the floor and risk being thrown out by, again, those naive individuals, or there will be something called a discharge petition signed by most Democrats and a handful or more of Republicans. You need a majority to do that. They will get this bill to the floor. And once this bill is on the floor, a solid majority, maybe um, 300 members will support it, certainly 280. It's a time-consuming process, as you've just set out, perhaps two months. Right. President Zelensky, giving interviews on the second anniversary this weekend, said they have a month, and then they're going to have well, to be in the crouch position. They're going to be defending, and they're going to lose lives as a result of that delay. Well, in fact, American aid has been delayed for almost five months, and certainly Ukrainians have lost territory and land as a result. So the antics of these knives in the House Republican Caucus, Freedom Caucus, is cost could risk real defeat for Ukraine, a big victory for Putin, which is our principal adversary, excuse me, the Russians describe the United States as their principal adversary, and a great blow to American leadership. That's the dangers of this very, very dangerous policy by, again, the naifs in the House. Ambassador Herbst, always good to get your thoughts. Thank you for coming on the programme. Thank evening. you. My pleasure.